Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. Welcome to St Andrew's Church, Rushmere. If you are joining us for the first time, well done for finding us. Please get in touch, like us, subscribe below. It's really good that you are here. Today is Rogation Sunday, the day when the church has traditionally offered prayer for God's blessing on the fruits of the earth and the labours of those who produce our food. But ever mindful of our current situation, please join me in prayer. Father, at this time of bewildering uncertainty, we know your love for us is never wavers nor falters. Give us calm and the gift of trust in place of our anxiety. Give us your love and compassion to conquer all fear. Give us the imagination to see and do what is right and possible, even when we are distracted and stressed. As you call us together in the love of your Son, Jesus Christ, let us unite our thoughts and actions with his will, that in the midst of this present disruption and suffering, your love is experienced, named and known, all this we pray in his name. Amen. In the past, a common feature of Rogation Days was the ceremony of beating the bands, in which a procession of parishioners led by the minister and church wardens would process around the boundary of their parish and pray for its protection in the coming year. If I'm honest, I haven't worked out where the parish boundary is and we haven't any choir boys available to beat anyway. But what we have is some lovely images sent in by you. I've tried to reference them and Reverend Marion will tell us more, speaking from, well, see if you can recognise where she is. Chris reads the gospel from the allotment and Nat and the children are joining us from their lovely garden. We begin the service by singing for the beauty of the earth to a favourite setting of many.
first hymn reminded us of the beauty of our planet. But we know the earth groans because of the abuse we have inflicted on it. So let us ask God to have mercy on our tired land and to prosper the work of our soiled hands. Let us ask God to forgive our delusions of self-sufficiency so that we may praise him for his provision and goodness. Lord, you give us this good earth, yet we take your generous gifts for granted. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, you give us this good earth, but we squander its rich resources. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you give us this good earth, but we fail to share your bounty with all your children. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The only response to God's forgiveness is to sing Gloria in excelsis. Grant us a good harvest, and the grace always to rejoice 
in your fatherly care. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The psalm is 121, and we are led by Nat and the family. But first, we turn to Philippians, the fourth chapter, the fourth verse. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice, let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus, in Christ Jesus. This is the word of Lord. Of Lord. Speed to God. I lift my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot sleep. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore. Before we join our reader Chris on his allotment, we sing that uplifting hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. A number of people have suggested this hymn. If this is your favourite, then this is for you. As we sing, let's enjoy some of the wonderful images of our parish you have sent in. Thank you.
to them. Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, Ask, and it will be given to you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who searches, finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Today is Rogation Sunday, which precedes the three Rogation days leading up to Ascension Day on Thursday. Rogation Tide has traditionally been a time when the words of the 17th century poet and clergyman George Herbert, Christians prayed for a blessing of God for the fruits of the field, for justice in the preservation of the bounds, charity in living, walking and neighbourly accompanying one another with reconciling of differences at that time, if there be any, and for mercy in relieving the poor by a liberal distribution of largesse, which at that time is or ought to be made. A poor harvest at that time would mean that the community would go hungry later in the year. In modern times, with more efficient farming, that fear has diminished, but nevertheless, it is good to set aside time to pray for our farmers and for their work, especially this year, as the coronavirus pandemic has presented challenges for them and for other food producers. In the days before Ordnance Survey maps, there were not always clear boundaries between parishes, especially where there were open field systems. And it was important for a village to know the bounds of their own land so at Rogation Tide, everyone would beat the bounds of the parish, during which prayers were said, and boys were bumped on boundary stones to ensure they never forgot the boundaries. You may remember that in 2018, some of us walked the parish boundary as part of St Andrew's 50th anniversary celebrations. The youth club joined us for part of that walk, and I'm sure the young people were glad that bumping was a thing of the past. Rogation Tide is an ancient festival and today boundaries are more easily defined but it still holds meaning for us perhaps especially this year as it not only links us with the past but also encourages us to remember our need of one another and the importance of building community in today's fast-moving technological society. Rogation Tide remains a timely reminder not only to give thanks and to pray for our parish and the crops being grown within it, but also to continue to celebrate our sense of belonging to this place and to this church, and to pray even in these difficult times for an ongoing and developing sense of community in this parish, even though our gatherings must remain virtual for the time being. Now you might be wondering what our readings today have to do with rogation. If I tell you that the word rogation comes from the Latin verb rogare, which means to ask, 
that may give you a clue. Rogation days are days of prayer and of petition, days of asking for God's blessing on new crops being planted and for a fruitful season of growth. Just as at harvest, we will give thanks for the safe gathering of those same crops. The context for our Gospel reading is Jesus' teaching about prayer. It is perhaps in Luke's Gospel that we most clearly see Jesus as a man of prayer. Not just teaching about prayer, but demonstrating by example his relationship with God through prayer. The disciples have been moved to ask him to teach them to pray. And so he teaches them what we now know as the Lord's Prayer. He urges them to see as a focus of their prayer the honouring of God's name and the coming of his kingdom, the need to humble themselves to God's sovereignty and to stand in a place of forgiveness and forgiving where they are right with God and with each other. As to how they should pray, Jesus' answer is ask, seek, knock, pray with persistence, never giving up. The epistle reading from Philippians 4 says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. In other words, ask. When Jesus tells the disciples to ask, seek, knock, the sense in Greek is not of a one-off, but a continuous action. Keep on asking, keep on seeking, keep on knocking. Be persistent, hold on to God's promise that whoever asks will receive, whoever seeks will find. And whoever knocks, the door will be open to them. Jesus illustrates this by way of a parable. A man knocking at midnight and persisting until his friend gets up and gives him the bread he needs for his guest. Be persistent in prayer as God will answer. And yes, there are times when God answers our prayers in exactly the way we've asked for because in his wisdom he knows that is the right thing for us at that time. But there are also times when our prayers are not answered as we had hoped. Praying in faith is not to expect magical answers to everything we think we want. Praying in faith is praying in a way that honours God's holy name and seeks his will in the situation. Jesus knew that only too well when he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, knowing what was before him and asking God to take the cup from him, he was still able to say, yet not my will, but yours. God may answer our prayers in a different way to what we expect, but he will not give us anything to harm us. As Jesus says, would any of you who are fathers give your son a snake when he asks for a fish? Or would you give him a scorpion when he asks for an egg? As bad as you are, you know how to give good things to your children. How much more then will the Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? God knows our need. And as Paul writes to the church in Philippi, he will meet them according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. As we seek to model our own prayer life on that of Jesus, as we spend more time with our Father in prayer, we will understand more of what it means to be in a covenant relationship with him, to honour his name, to be able to say, your kingdom come, your will be done. And the more we will give room for the Holy Spirit to work in our lives. As we all know from the current situation, life can often be far from easy and for many at the moment life is extremely difficult and painful but we have a choice we can lose heart and faith even stop praying or we can trust in god's wisdom and authority and keep praying into the situation 
So in these uncertain and challenging times, on Rogation Sunday 2020, let us echo the thoughts of George Herbert in this time, in this place, and ask God for his continued blessing on the fruits of the field, on our church community, on our walk of faith together, on our mission and outreach to those in need of his love and grace. Amen. Please join me in prayer as we ask the God of creation to send a blessing upon us. Each week I will also include some names from the parish directory. The response to we ask in faith is We ask you to hear us, good Lord. Upon the rich earth, send a blessing, O Lord. Let the earth be fruitful and its resources be hallowed. We ask in faith. We, we ask you to hear us, good Lord. Upon human la labour, send a blessing, O Lord. Prosper the work of our hands. May all find dignity and just reward in their work. Free the exploited and oppressed. We ask in faith. We, we ask, ask you to, to hear us, us good, good Lord. Lord. Upon the produce of the earth, send a blessing, O Lord. Guide us into a sustainable future and give us the will to share the fruits of the earth. We ask in faith. We, we ask you to, to hear us, us good, good Lord. Lord. Upon the seas and waters, send a blessing, O Lord. Teach us to cherish the water of the earth and to conserve the seas, lakes and rivers. We ask in faith. We, we ask you to, to hear us, good Lord. Upon aid agencies, send a blessing, O Lord. Where the earth is parched and the well has run dry, where war brings want and children go hungry, where the poor cry out for bread and justice. Give hands to care and heal and compel us to be generous. We ask in faith. We, we ask, ask you, you to, to hear, hear us, good Lord. Lord. For those who have asked for prayer, we pray your peace and healing touch among them. Janet, Ellen, Janet, Evelyn and Ted, Ruth, Roger and Mary, Doreen, Janice, Matthew, Tom, Betty, June, Gwen and Nefat. In a moment of silence, I invite you to bring to the throne of grace, to name out loud those for whom you pray. And holding before you all who have died recently, among them Basil Harper, Marjorie Lewis, Audrey Gray, Baby Sabir, James Surridge, Sylvia Davis, Delia Hamilton, and Baby Hero, we ask in faith. We, we ask, ask you to, to hear us, us good Lord. Lord. Lord, we pray for our parish and for the members of this parish church. This morning, naming Jim and Jill, Bob and Joan, Joss, Doris, David, Judith, Lillian, Uncle Brad, Kevin, Ali, 
Matt and the children. Derek, Doreen, Gillian, Jenny and Hilary. We ask you to hear us, good Lord, for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. By prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guide your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. During the singing of this next hymn, we would usually take up the offertory and I would say a prayer. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for your continued financial support of St Andrews. May God bless the gifts we offer, the givers, and may we be used for the extension of God's kingdom here on earth. Amen.
Blessed be God, by whose grace creation is renewed, by whose love heaven is opened, by whose mercy we offer our sacrifice of praise. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him you have created us in your own image and made us stewards of your good creation. Through him you teach us to exalt in the birds of the air, in the lilies of the field, the precious and life-giving crops of the earth. Through him you free us from the slavery of sin, giving him to die upon the cross and to rise again for our salvation. Through him you begin your work of new creation as we look for a new heaven and a new earth in which your righteousness dwells. Therefore, we join with angels and archangels and give voice to every creature under heaven forever praising you and singing. and bless you loving father through jesus christ our lord and as we obey his command send your holy spirit on us and on these gifts the broken bread and wine outpoured may be to us the body and blood of your dear son on the night before he died he had supper with his friends and taking bread he praised you. He broke the bread, shared it with them and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. And again, he gave you thanks, shared it and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. We plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth and your kingdom comes. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with St. Christopher, St. Andrew, St. Mary and all the saints to be with you forever at your table in heaven. 
through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Amen. Father in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. We do not presume to come to, come to this your table, table merciful Lord, trusting in our unrighteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood. We may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. <laughs>
You gave seed to us to sow and bread for us to eat. You have blessed the fruit of our labour in this Eucharist. So we ask you to give all your children their daily bread, that the world may praise you for your goodness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the source of all goodness and growth, pour his blessing upon all things created and upon you, his children, that you may use his gifts to his glory and the welfare of all peoples and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you, those you love and those who love you, wherever they may be, today and remain until Jesus comes or calls. Amen. There will be an online service this coming Thursday when we recall how Jesus left the earth and returned to his Father, ascending into heaven. Our final hymn today is just joy to sing. I hope you will enjoy singing these familiar words to possibly a new tune it is quite fast.
and bring forth the fruits of righteousness. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you.